Uh, terrific talk, by the way. Thank you very much. I was, uh, you had mentioned uh, at the outset that you had started this effort as a comparative study between the US, the UK, and the China. And I wondered if you could just spend a minute telling us what you felt are some of the main differences in how we approach denaturalization here with an emphasis less on maybe specific idiosyncrasies in history, but more maybe the different approaches, the philosophical approaches that the different countries have in viewing citizenships and rights and human rights. Maybe that's more. Yeah, there are a lot of similarities. First of all, there is a similarity between France and the US uh, as a sort of uh, will to control the proceedings and not take it, not have fraud, etc. In the special circumstances, which is done in France and the France, is not out of what is the US and the US. The second uh, convergence, I feel, it's a very interesting convergence, is that as much as the US Supreme Court was extremely reluctant to back the government during the Second World War in his program on denaturalization, the French court, the Conseil d'État, was very reluctant to back the French government and parliament in its denaturalization program that concerned German and French during the First World War. And, it, uh, and the government was so unhappy with the resistance of the administrative Supreme Court that the parliament shifted the power of judicial review from the administrative court to the Court of Cassation in 1917 because they were very unhappy with the resistance of the court. So that's quite interesting to see our democracy, and that's the big difference with totalitarian authorities, totalitarian regime. Our democracies, uh, I mean, you have a strong resistance toward this kind of policy. Even among the civil servants. So you have a, the, I would say, the political pressure to do it, in Congress especially. Uh, but you have a split government, a split uh, decision, and the role of the courts is quite interesting. So uh, today in France, uh, you have also one or two barriers. Uh, it can occur, contrary to what happened in the US, for activities that has uh, been developed after the naturalization, or in the 10 years for the naturalization. The country where it's the most the country that has given the executive power the, the highest uh, part, the highest uh, discretionary power is the UK. And you can, I, I just mentioned for 16, in the last two years, if you are considered as being acting with the interest of your country, the Home Secretary can strip you of citizenship without going to court. It's quite interesting to see that it is in the UK that you have the less judicial control in these matters. 